I'm with you every step of the way. Close your eyes, honey! Alex Bams alone cannot prevent his fate. While debuting nearly two years ago, Half-Life Alex, a first-person adventure shooter, has defined not only a new genre of gaming, but it has also helped define core user experience patterns for extended reality. From inventory management and depth of field menu hierarchy to the exploration of physical affordances and signifiers, Half-Life Alex is a metaverse masterpiece. Hey, I'm Daniel, a UX designer based in San Francisco. Today we're going to be diving in and critiquing some of the UX of Half-Life Alex. One of the best ways to create really great design, I think, is to really immerse yourself in it and document it. And when you do that, you can look upon it, understand fully why they made the decisions they did, and then implement them and change them along the way. Now, many of you may not be interested in video game UX, but it's been around a lot longer than contemporary mobile and web applications. And if you think about it, games like Metal Gear Solid, Grand Theft Auto, Elder Scrolls have really pioneered a lot with what we see today. I mean, think of mapping applications, think of HUDs and cars. All of these things were predated by video games. And it's going to be the kind of the same thing with XR. Today, a lot of the applications that are being made are video games. And if you study the patterns in AR, VR, soon enough you'll be able to bring those into practical applications and be ahead of the game. And today we're going to talk about that. Today we're going to talk about using Z or Y indexing to give depth and show hierarchy. We're going to talk about inventory management and how people can quickly store and call up tools when they need them. So if you like this kind of stuff and you want me to get more into a little the nitty gritty of the transition of video game design, to practical design, or if you just want more critiques or breakdowns of other applications, let me know with a like, subscribe, or just comment below of what you want to see. And you know what, this is my first video, so whatever people write, I'll probably do. Okay, let's go into Half-Life Alex. Okay, so let's start with menus. Now, extended reality menus at the moment aren't very different from their ancestors. The way they display exterior information is almost identical. However, when we start bringing menus into the physical space, something awesome happens. But before we jump into Half-Life Alex's in-world menus, let's explore the home screen and discuss exterior menus. Okay, so now we're in the entry menu of Half-Life Alex, and it's an exterior menu. And what do I mean by an exterior menu? Well, exterior menus pull you away from the world experience, while in-game or in-world menus are actually present inside the world. Pretty self-explanatory. So let's talk a little bit about hierarchy. So in a lot of contemporary and web applications, um, people use this concept of z-indexing to actually give the concept of depth. And depth has a lot to play with hierarchy. Things on different planes often like rely on each other to give each other context. In Half-Life Alex, there are three levels of indexing or hierarchy. And in VR or in XR, it's on the y-axis and not the z-index. The first one, what we're looking at is right over there. And that is the furthest back. That's why it's what I call one, right? So it basically shows you what's going to be coming up and giving you insight. It's not your main focus. Your main focus is this area right in front of you. And that is the second level. So what is the third level? Well, let's take a look. If I continue, it is this. It is a confirmational level. And a lot of applications have the third level or fourth level as the confirmational level. However, there's a lot of contemporary mobile applications that use multiple or hundreds of different realms of z-indexing that kind of go on top of each other. And it's really annoying to stay away from that. Okay, so now we understand the three levels of depth. Let's take a look at the second level a little bit more closely. Okay, let's see what happens when there's multiple steps on the second level. So if I go to games, I select games, the first level becomes a second level, and then a new first level appears. I hit captivity. The first level becomes a second level. The second level is over here, push and it is accompanied by an insight to those specific areas. Now, let's see what happens if I click the first option. Okay, the third level comes up, and it, which is the confirmational level, and the sec all second levels push back. This is contextual for all of these elements, but let's get out of there. And that kind of brings up a point, which is the context of wayfinding. So in a lot of contemporary applications, people use this thing called breadcrumbing to show past decisions. And here in XR, um, you, you're not confined to a, a single individual canvas. Instead, you're like focused and limited by your field of view. So if you look right here, we can see all the past decisions we've made. We selected games. We selected is or will be. And then we are now in the load game slot. And that's super cool. Now, I really wish that I could navigate all the way back to the main menu, but instead it just acts as a button. That's basically my main critique there. So now let's focus on UI elements, right? So let's go to options. 
Let's go to volume. And right here we have a bunch of sliders. And this, and you know, of course, you know, you can drag and you can just like dictate the volume of every one of these sliders. I wish they would have had some depth come out to show individual selections. Um, and I think they kind of missed that opportunity. But also like the accessibility with contrast is actually really super difficult to read. And that's something that I would have fixed. And we're gonna see that here in the toggles. So if you see right here, we have a stepper and a toggle. If we look at this, this toggle, which is a binary switch, it goes on, off, on, off. Again, this is not meet accessibility guideline. Okay, so now let's look at the stepper. If we go front and back, it's pretty easy to click, but it's really hard to see specifically what I'm clicking. Again, they needed some contrast. Another thing I find really cool is this little tooltip helper. So if I hover over anything in my main selection space, which is right here, it gives context to what it does. And they use that all the time over this exterior menu. Again, really sweet. Um, so let's take a look at this button. So what I find fascinating is that when I started designing for XR, um, I used to design everything on a plane, but the more your head goes down, um, the basically it's a lot harder to read. So once you hit a specific um, angle, you should really start angling up your UI. And that's what they're doing right here with this button. So finally, let's talk about a little the, the decoration in this and the bells and whistles. Okay, so the first thing I wanna point out is the cube grid. If you look around us, it's kind of hard to tell. These dots basically are going into the foreground and giving us this sense of space. And if you look down here, this cube grid is actually framing the individual environment, um, which is really cool. If we go into say new game and um, we highlight over individual chapters, they also supplement the experience with this 3D rendition of the city. And that is really, really cool, even though like I have no other contextual idea of how it looks because you're in the middle of it, it's a nice piece of decor. So now let's dive into other exterior menus in Half-Life Alex. So let's look at the last external menu um, of the game, um, and that is a top-down menu. So basically when you're in the game and if you want to jump to another save or stuff like that, um, the game has a way to pull you away from the world that allow you to do that. Okay, first I'm going to hold down the button and we're going to see a complete this meter and that adds friction so we don't accidentally trigger it while we're running around. So I'm going to hold it down and we are in. Now this menu right here is basically identical to the entry menu we saw. Um, however, the way that they, pull, they take us in and out of the world is very different. So let's look at some of the signifiers and how they do that. Okay, so I'm gonna hit resume. Okay, as you see right now, they have this completeness meter that highlights the button I'm pressing, right? The, you have the hamburger. So if I um, hold it down, I am now in the world. Um, and um, as you saw, we saw like, like again, the, the cube grid push us forward. So it creates a sense of depth, but then everything dithers and focuses specifically on the menu. And the, the materials in my hand change. Like these are all like supplementary signifiers to show that we are, actually not in the physical world. Super simple, super quick, but it's something to note and I haven't seen anyone else do this very well, so kudos to you guys. Cool. Okay, so now let's look at some of the real world menus of Half-Life Alex. So the first two little real world menus I'm gonna show you are very, very small, but super interesting. So um, they kind of act like a HUD, but it's not a heads up display. They're just menus that are always with you. And the first one is the hand menu. And the hand menu basically shows you your health, how much resin you have, and resin is a material used to build objects. And it also shows you your ammo, if you see right there. Super interesting. So instead of a HUD following you around, you can always look and see like all the information you want and then put it away. And you always have access to that. Cool. Okay, the next real world menu I wanna show you is the gun menu. So if I click, I have the ability to move my hand in any direction and select an object, right? Um, it is, you can't really store anything in it, but it allows you to grab things at will. Pretty rad. Okay. Another one I wanna show you, another little menu right now, is basically um, how many bullets are left within your gun. So I would call this the gun menu part two, I don't know. So basically your gun holds X amount of bullets. You have to understand how many are in the chamber at all times so you don't get killed. This gun's already kind of powered up so it's gonna have an external magazine that I can't really access. But if you look at these little um, squares right here, when I upload a new clip, it tells me how many are there at all times. Super rad. Okay, so now let's look at some more interesting 
um, real world menus. One of my favorite menus within the game, and that is the crafting menu. So um, when you find these machines in the world, you have the ability to upgrade your weapons. And when you approach them, you have to solve puzzles and stuff like that. So for the sake of this video, I just want to show you how this works. So I approach the machine. Um, it gives me a signifier specifically where to place my gun. Um, it gives me a signifier here telling me what to do with my gun. So it tells me to put it in the cradle, tells me my resin. And let's see what happens when I pull out a gun I want to upgrade. So I pulled out my pistol. As you see, um, this hologram changed. I put it close and it sucked it in. And basically the menu has split up into like four sections. The first section right here is the like shows me what I can upgrade. Um, this it has a little tool tip over here for the another section. It has my resin and it uses uh, and so now it's allowing me to do ray casting and anytime I hover over one of these things it shows you what it's going to build on top of it. Now as you see the cube grid is here again it's giving depth to the gun just imagine if that not being there it wouldn't be nearly as immersive and also these little mini cubes highlighting super interesting. So again this is like such an amazing uh, menu system that's in the real world and that we could use in XR everywhere. Okay, so now let's take a look at the health system. Okay, so now it's time to show you the final menu, I should say, that's real world, and that is the health area. The health area consists of really um, three signifiers and one affordance. Um, so let's look at the affordance. The affordance right now is this handle. So if I hold it down, this hand comes down, and that is a signifier to tell me where to place my hand. And so when I'm low in health, which I am now, I can come to this machine. Um, the bug basically shows you that it has one charge and after you use it, it's gone. Poor bug is dead. So what happens when I put my hand on the screen? Let's see what happens. Now I have health. Super rad, super sweet. Oh, I have my mask on, cool. Okay, with menus out of the way, let's talk about inventory systems. In applications today, we can save items to access them at will. So let's call this quick access, say, forms of inventory. And there are two forms of inventory. The ability to access items or actions based on conditions or situations is called conditional inventory. Now the ability to access said items at all times is called long form inventory. When used correctly, each form can help guide the user and reduce friction. So with both of those concepts explored, let's see how Half-Life handles them. Now let's take a look at long-form inventory. And as I explained before, um, long-form inventory allows you to carry items and access them at will. Um, in Half-Life Alex, the way that they did that is to allot you two slots on your wrist, um, and each one can hold one item. As you see right now, I have a item that's already placed in my left hand, but on my right, I don't. And so when you look at a unfilled slot, I have this nice pretty bracelet. So what happens if I specifically want to add things to it? So let's grab it. When I pick it up, you see my bracelet changes to a full circle. And when I turn it, we see this amazing little in-depth vortex. So when I approach it, it gives me this nice haptic feedback in this cone, allowing me to know that it is actually going to be sucked in. So when I let go, the material changes, sucks in, twists um, clockwise, and it changes states, right? So now that I have two objects, I can access them at will. So how do I do that? So if I basically hover over it, you can see, let's go really slow. See how that works? Like that slight turn on that axis is beautiful. You have that cone and the cones like, and so then eventually it snaps and the cone is still there. So if I grab, I have now selected it. So that's pretty sweet. So let's, let's take a look at the trigger real quick. Um, so if you see it is um, horizontal, and if I pick up an item, it is now vertical. Imagine what you can do with this like in the future in practical applications. You can put keys in here, you can put like IDs in here, um, and you can have these circles kind of go down your arm if you want. So I'm just gonna drop it. Okay, so that is the first inventory. So with that, let's talk about conditional inventory. So in Half-Life Alex, you need to be able to grab ammunition and things at will without thinking about it. And so the way that they did that was that they separated um, ammunition management into a backpack system. So what is a backpack system? Well, a backpack system allows you to say, take an object like, like ammunition, put it behind your back and it is now stored. And so now I grab, for instance, these shells and I grab 
this resin. While I can only grab resin next to a uh, crafting station, I can grab ammo at will. But the ammo that I'm selecting is based on which gun I have. So if I grab, of course, the handgun, if I reach over my back and pull out, it's gonna pull out um, the object that is related to this gun. Now, if I wanted to say pull out um, shotgun ammo, um, I couldn't do that without switching to the shotgun, right? Um, so if I pull behind my back, there is shotgun. What's this, what happens if I have no gun equipped? If I reach behind my back, it always defaults to the handgun because that's what you start with. So this kind of conditional um, inventory is super rad and can get kind of complex, but I think that Half-Life Alex did an amazing job with it. I'm not sure if any other game explored backpacks before this. Okay, awesome. Okay, before we dive back into the real world, um, this guy has a cool mask and I really want it. Oh God. Oh, mask. Okay. Okay, so let's dive back into the real world. Okay, so that was my first video for YouTube and my first UX breakdown of an XR game. It took way longer than I thought it would, but it was a learning experience, right? So um, Half-Life Alex has a lot to share when it comes down to the crafting of XR experiences and patterns. So if you guys are interested in more videos like that, let me know. Also, like I have crafted a notion board full of XR patterns. So if you guys want to take inspiration, um, the links down below, feel free to copy it and play with it at all you want. I honestly think that at this day and age, we have such an amazing opportunity to craft a more ethical and practical digital world. And it really starts now. It starts now before um, everything becomes highly corporatized. It starts before people are hyper manipulated and we can create an ethical design system and an ethical framework to help our future civilization evolve because XR can be incredibly rewarding and plant us firmly back in the physical world or it can be a goddamn hellscape and I think it's really up to us to dive in and ask those philosophical questions. And that's what I really wanna do with this channel. I wanna break down and explore how to design, but also the deeper philosophical ideas of why we design and how we should design. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, give me a like or subscribe, or let me know in the comments below what you want me to dive into. And um, I'm excited to build this new, exciting world with you guys. And um, until then, I love you and plus minus, take care.